Hello everyone, <coughs> this is my first posting, and I think this is as close as you get to a Joseph Newman motor, as I can get simply. You can see the primary coil over there. Um, a large magnet and a very nice chrome shaft. Part of my commutator is over there. You can see on the shaft. Um, that's going through to the coil, and <coughs> the rest of the commutator over there, if I can get it in focus. Which you can see as as the magnet goes up, touches the <coughs> commutator, which then energizes the coil, and coil is then energizing um, inversely to the magnet. So the coil is wanting to get the magnet to that position. If you had to bring it up to there, it would energize and flip the magnet over to there, and hold it there through momentum. Magnet carries on. Uh, the whole motor, the rotor carries on turning until it engages there with electricity again and then goes down <coughs> powering it um, I've just got two batteries in series here two little alarm gel batteries, 12 volts um, lead acid batteries and they putting out about 24 volts I can run it on 12 volts, 24 volts just gives it a little bit more speed Basically running on 12 volts for about 12 hours, I lost about 0.3 of a volt on a 12 volt battery. Um, we ran it last night and we lost 0.3 of a volt. Um, the white coil here is essentially 7 core seven core cable which is just wide in series. It's a secondary coil, I'm just messing with it. Really. Yeah. And it's a coke bottle bottom, as you can see, or coke bottle top. And yeah, let's power it up. I'll just get the 24 volts on here. It's now connected, which means this is live. I'm just going to show you again exactly what happens here. As you reverse it to touch there, you can see it kick against my finger. Wanting to spin the magnet over. And if we let it go by itself, It's essentially very economical. Spinning without any problem. I can put a reasonable amount of, of pressure on here in terms of work that the motor is doing, but it's not massive. Um, as I put pressure on here, you're getting a few more sparks out of there. Yeah, <coughs> in terms of. Um, Getting back the back EMF into the battery, I'm not noticing anything specific. Um, if I put a wet finger on there, which is contacting the one side of the coil, and a wet finger on the positive terminal of the battery, I get a nice little shock, which is the collapsing of the magnetic field. The back EMF gives me a nice shock. Um, but I don't notice that charging the battery necessarily. The battery seems to be draining very slowly. Um, yeah, something very interesting, my secondary coil, if I short it out, I've got these all wired in series, you can see there's seven cores to this coil in the white, 100 meters, um, 100 meters of coil, seven of them, so 700 meters represented here, and as I short this out, I get a good shock there too, but slow down the whole actual motor. You can see that as I short it out. So it's doing a bit of work for me there. And um, secondary coil is shorting out and giving me some power, essentially in slowing down the motor. So that's loading the motor. And we're just going to measure this quickly for you. 
Um, it's really AC volts that is coming out. Let's have a quick look. Sorry, excuse. With the video camera, why not just get these contacts on here? You can see there. It's 14 volts. 14 volts AC coming out. We've got a 24 volt battery driving it, so we're not getting anything amazing. In terms of milliamps coming out of the secondary coil, um, I don't know whether we choose the AC. AC milliamps coming out of the secondary coil. This is going to now short the coil out and see what kind of full load we can get. Amperage, there you go, that's in amps. So we're getting 29 milliamps, which is not bad. 14 volts. No, this won't be 14 volts. Anyway, 29 milliamps. Um, it's quite a high current coil. 29 milliamps out. Um, I don't know what voltage we're getting once we load the coil like this. Um, let me see if I let it spin up a bit. And then load it. And I'm not getting that right. Anyway, that's my Joseph Newman motor. Um, yeah, I don't know how many windings I've got here or how thick this wire is. You can actually see here um, the wire that I've used for winding. Um, there's a number of, of winds on there. And it's, it's essentially two coils with a rotor sp spinning in the middle. Um, I've got a very nice chrome shaft going through and yeah so that's it nice efficient motor but we're not getting any wow um, from it yet hopefully somebody can explain to me how to get more wow out of this um, thank you have a good day me here again just another interesting observation and these are near down magnets sorry missed that out um, in my hand got a really really tiny magnet and you can see even over this distance which is probably 30 centimeters we're having a little bit of activity from the main motor there 30 centimeters away which essentially means that we could probably have a coil all the way to where this little magnet is and still have a magnetic effect it starts to die about here somewhere. There's even a slight wobbling with the magnet. I don't know if you can see it. And obviously, as you go closer, we get a full magnetic interference there with the thing actually turning and spinning in my in my hand. So these near down magnets are incredibly powerful, very strong, should be able to get a huge effect. If I wind up the secondary coil, if I connect the secondary coil in series to this primary coil here, the motor actually slows down, which is also interesting. Maybe because I am magnetically loading it on one side of the magnet, only the secondary winding is essentially below the magnet, as opposed to being sort of in the middle. Um, yeah, any comments on that too? Thanks. Bye.